clearing the clutter inside and out, we are talking about letting go of things we don't love. Do you keep gifts you dislike because you're afraid of hurting someone's feelings? Would you like to clear some physical clutter, but are afraid someone will visit and notice you don't have their gift? Are you holding on to something you don't use because you paid a lot of money for it? Are you ready to let the insignificant stuff go? Let's begin our month as we focus on self-love and self-care. Ready to clear your clutter and share your gifts with the world? Every Tuesday at 1 p.m., join award-winning professional organizer, author, and certified life coach Julie Caraccio on clearing the clutter inside and out as she teaches you how to navigate the waters to declutter your life. Julie Caraccio destroys the box and examines clutter in all areas – physical, mental, emotional, spiritual, energetic, relationships, health, finances, and more. This month is all about self-love. For me, this is where it all begins. When you love yourself, you won't tolerate people who don't treat you well, you won't surround yourself with stuff you don't use or need, and you are able to attract lots of good into your life. I am always working on self-love because I know I can always be better at this. I believe we are these perfect beings when we were born and then crap happens. Whether it's teachers, society, family, and friends, we forget the magnificent, brilliant beings that we are. We're gonna focus all this month on self-love and self-care. To start off our month, I'm going to focus on physical clutter because most of us have stuff hanging around that we don't love and might not even like. By taking care of and loving what you own, it's good practice in taking care of yourself and making sure you have people that love and support you in your life. The name of the podcast says it all, clearing the clutter inside and out. When you work on one, you affect the other. Look around you. Do you love everything you own? How about most of it? Some of it, none of it. Yes, I've worked with people who have owned stuff they didn't like for a variety of reasons. I'm gonna share a couple client stories with you. Kay had a basement full of stuff that she never used. And she also had rooms, yes, more than one room, full of clothes never worn, many with the tag still on them. Now, the main issue for her was it was her parents' stuff and she felt like if she would let it go, she would be dishonoring them. It was painful for her to look at all these items, yet she couldn't let them go. So she didn't love any of it. She didn't even like it. And in some cases, didn't even know what was in the boxes. It was a worry of dishonoring her parents. Now, what I like to say to my clients, and I truly believe this, when someone is passed, they want you to be happy. They want you to be free. They're happy and free now. And don't worry about letting go things that are family members. I always ask, I say, hey, check out if another family member would like it. If not, Donate it to charity. Don't let it become a burden to you. I had another client, Sam, who had a pile of articles. They were two to three years old, and it was literally a huge stack, probably four or five feet tall. And so as we started to talk, I asked Sam why he was keeping all these articles. And he explained to me he was afraid that if he didn't keep in touch with people, so there were articles to send, hey, you thought it, you might be interested in this, things of that nature, that if he didn't keep connected, that they would become really upset and not love them anymore. When he voiced this, he was able to realize how absurd that was and we were able to recycle the pile immediately. Again, when you're caught up in it, you sometimes can't tell what the clutter is really about. There's no judgment in this. We all have the answers within and I view my job as being able to support and tease out the answers because you have the best wisdom for you. So in this instance, keeping physical clutter that they didn't need, use or love, was an effort to stay connected to make sure that they felt love. And finally, we're gonna talk about P. P hated antiques, but had a house full of them. Why? Because they had been in the family. No one else in the family wanted to hold on to them, and they didn't want him to let it go. So that really put him in a tough spot. However, we talked about it, and I said, you know, if you don't love it, that's okay. So as I mentioned a moment ago, come up with a plan. Offer to give it to people in the family if they don't want it. If it's something like an antique, I would always suggest hiring someone who knows about those because they're valuable. Why not make some money from it? The guilt had been forcing him to hold on to things that he doesn't love. And as I mentioned at the top, how many of you are holding on to wedding presents because you're afraid someone's going to come over and notice that you don't have it anymore? That's a huge thing. 
I'm going to share a story. Look, I always put myself out there. I talked about wedding gifts, I think, in September, and I held on to a wedding gift a couple months. No, no, sorry, a few years. Let me rephrase that. I held on to a wedding gift that I didn't like. My husband didn't like. It didn't fit our decor. And the other story behind it, and I don't tend to get too personal because I don't like to call people out, especially since I have tons of people that listen to this podcast and listen to the video. The person that had given us a gift, we were really super close at one point and we weren't close anymore. And so that gift, every day that I saw it, because of what it was, I saw it every day. It just reminded me and that I was really still upset about the friendship because it was, I felt the rug had been pulled underneath me. So it took me years to let that go. And I finally was like, you need to listen to your podcast and you need to listen to your own advice. The struggle with that, well, I feel guilty. It was a gift someone gave me, even though the friendship's over. So the struggle is real and guilt is a real part of holding on to physical clutter. So those are just a few stories and examples that I wanted to share with you. See if you see yourself in any of those examples and you can dig a little deeper and start to release things. Anxious, exhausted, stressed out, losing your mind, ready to get your life back. Go to reawakenyourbrilliance.com to learn how Julie Caraccio can support you. Let's start purging what you don't love. Now, if you're using something or needing something, you may not love it, and you don't have to necessarily purge it. An example I would use is we have a coat tree to hang coats. It's in constant use all year round. We have a really odd-shaped closet downstairs, and finally, after living here for eight years, I thought, I'm tired of being annoyed by the closet. We're going to get a coat tree. Do I absolutely love it? No. I really would have preferred to have time to go to antique stores or to go to secondhand stores to kind to find something that was different and funky. But I use it every single day. Maybe someday I'll replace it, but for right now it works for me. Sometimes a mistake people make is they simply go crazy with purging. So if love is too strong of a word for you to use now, think about do you like it or use it. I'm going to suggest that you concentrate on things you don't love and aren't using or needing and that are a high priority. I know some of you listening have stuff you can purge right now that you don't love, like, need, or use. I'm going to encourage you to let that go right now. Make a list of all that, or if you're listening and doing, get it in the donate pile right now. We'll talk about some of the challenges that may come with that in a moment. So if we've made our list or have items that we know we can release right now, let's dig a little deeper. Are you able to tell if you really love an item? It's okay if you can't. This is probably a bit harder than people realize. I feel we're really conditioned in our society to buy, buy, buy. One of the things I remember after 9-11 is they all encouraged us to go buy, buy, buy. I don't remember go donate blood. The message that stuck with me, and I think I was in such shock, is you, we need to support the U.S., we need to support the economy, go spend money. That's what I remember the most. Now again, not the whole tragedy of 9-11, but that was a huge message that I took away. Maybe they encouraged volunteering and donating blood, but that was what stuck with me. How do you know if you love something? Here are some things to consider. Does it make you happy, bring you joy or pleasure? I love original artwork and buy some when I travel, usually from street vendors. And every time I see this art, it triggers a nice memory and puts a smile on my face. Do you feel good when you use it or see it? What's your initial response? If you don't, that can be a quick reason to release it right now. Many people hold on to things that don't make them feel good. I have had clients who hold on to items such as mementos from a failed relationship. I mentioned the wedding gift story earlier where I held on to something that was painful for me. And the guilt, and well, maybe if the friendship gets on track again, blah, blah, blah. And I finally had to say, you know what? I don't feel good when I look at this. It's time to let it go. Begin to ask yourself, do you really love it? Really, really love it. How does your body feel when you ask that question? I close my eyes when I do something like this to quiet my ego. This is really great for the closet too. If you don't really love it and feel like a million bucks in it, why do you still have it? Again, if you use it every day, my gym clothes aren't fancy and I don't feel super fantastic in them, but I'm pretty utilitarian in my gym clothes. They fit and they keep me comfortable in working out, so I don't have to feel the need to be feel super attractive in them. Does something like obligation creep up? 
If so, it might not be something you love. I'm going to be talking about obligation again. Why would you hold on to something you don't love or use? Is it because you are worried that you will offend someone if they see you don't have the item anymore? Let's talk about that. How would you handle it? In reality, 99% of people would be okay, and I base this on personal and professional experience. The 1% maybe need to evaluate the relationship. If it's someone close, say a parent or sibling, maybe it invites you to have a deeper conversation. Remember, what others do and say is about them and how you respond is about you. Are you afraid you might need it someday? Trust you will get what you need when you need it. I tell my clients this all the time. That helps open you up more to trusting, to having faith, to believing. And if you're trying to create a different life, think about it. If you are afraid you might need it someday, it's like a straw. The energy of the universe, you're cutting it off at the straw. Like, me, need, I'm clenching, holding on to. Instead of slowly opening your hands or letting that straw become a wide straw as opposed to something that cuts off the energy. Think of these things as you go through your items. How can you release them? Do you need to hire someone to support you? Work with a trusted friend? Have memories come up and could counseling be helpful? Do you have collectibles? Do you have them because you love collecting or it was something that was started for you as a child and you just kept with it? Maybe you liked it 10 years ago and no longer do. Why not give away or sell on the internet an outdated hobby or collection and make way to try something new? Look at the memories you're holding on to. Remember, when everything has value, nothing does. I also say this a lot. If it's collecting dust in the garage, how important is it? I love our wedding album and look at it a few times a year. I'd never give that up. The same with our wedding video. I get it, the hubs to watch it once a year and I love it. Mainly, it looks like it was from the 80s, even though we were married in 2013. Don't equate love with time spent, as my wedding memorabilia illustrates. Do you love the memorabilia you hold on to? Is there a way to get creative, like taking digital photos and making a collage or a cool wall hanging? I've seen a lot of people make quilts out of t-shirts from high school or college that were important to them. If not, do you want to keep something boxed up and collecting dust? That's a serious question to ask. Think of your home as real estate. Are you going to take up valuable real estate with things just collecting dust? The goal here is to be more discerning about what is important, what brings you joy, and what makes you happy. My first episode from December 2016 talks about getting closure on physical items. It might be supportive as you do this if you have lots of emotions and feelings coming up. Take actions from today's podcast. What items can you release right now that you don't love? Pick one room and begin releasing physical stuff you don't love. Dig a little deeper. Are there any items you were holding on to out of obligation? Because you might need it someday? Consider journaling and seeing if something pops up. Create a game plan to let the more challenging items go. Ask yourself if you are honoring your memories. If you aren't, how can you do that? By creating a quilt, a shadow box, etc. If you don't want to spend the time or effort to honor it, why are you still holding on to it? Figure out how to release it. On next week's episode, we are going to examine how we talk to ourselves. What are you telling yourself? Go out, clear the clutter to create the life you choose, deserve, and desire. Ready to live a more joyful and fulfilling life? Sign up for our newsletter at reawakenyourbrilliance.com and receive a free copy of 10 Steps to Clearing Clutter Inside and Out. If you enjoyed today's episode, please rate and review Clearing the Clutter Inside and Out. See you next Tuesday at 1pm. 